Hi, everybody. This is Rich Mintz with Abaco Systems. I'm joined today by Luis Esparza, Product Manager for the Systems Solution Group. We're going to talk about how open architecture impacts embedded systems, especially in ISR, radar, and EW systems. Luis, thanks for joining me today. Uh, take it away. Thank you, Rich, for that introduction. Going back to 2019, a cross-service memo was issued, uh, which really formalized what had been developing in the uh, military industrial partnership for quite a while now. Um, in this memo, you'll see a direct call to action, essentially formalizing and, and driving us to collaborate and share information across boundaries, really driving home the, the critical nature of, of why we need to do this, you know, ensuring that our, our victory, our future victories really require this level of collaboration and sharing of information. And that can really only be done when we build it on these open collaborative standards. So thanks, Luis. Um, can you tell us how does this benefit the listeners that are engaged with us today um, especially with regards to EW, radar, and ISR systems. Sure can, Rich. So from a vendor and technologist perspective, the big picture and mandate from the joint force are, are internalized and enhance the way we at Abaco build and design and develop our products. Uh, the capabilities and, and benefits that a uh, MOSA and SOSA procurement uh, brings to the table are, are, are highlighted here essentially doing everything from re reducing our time to integrate solutions by building on these open standards and um, interoperability standards and ensuring that this interoperability is extended all the way from the sensor to the system and up through the platform and larger uh, battle space network as well. The best way for me to highlight this is to start with a few general architecture examples. Let us focus first on an EW architecture that has both electronic support and electronic attack capabilities. On the receiver front end, expect to balance a set of sometimes conflicting requirements, uh, striking a required balance between field of view and low observability can be difficult and may involve trades and evolution of requirements during a program's uh, life cycle. For the EW transmitter, expect a, a similar balance, but focusing really on, on transmission related requirements, reducing distortion while ensuring you have ample power and balancing you know, the gain from, from a, a given antenna and its overall you know, pattern associated with it and directivity uh, to really ensure effectiveness. Down at the, the digital level, decisions like balancing latency with channel quantity and, and channel bandwidths uh, is is also very important uh, ensuring you know your probability of intercept essentially you know may require you balance these between wide or, or narrow band approaches in addition the uh, digital to analog converter will really start to unlock uh, what would be traditionally referred to as arbitrary waveform generation capabilities so nearly uh, making every complex waveform imaginable available to you use for your, your countermeasures, responses, and, and capabilities. Further up at the pro, up the processing chain, we are also balancing a, a mixture of requirements. You know, things from um, security and anti-tamper are, are likely seen here as well, along with uh, identification and your more traditional, uh, you know, receiver scheduler type requirements. This is an area where, where updates over the life of a project and program are, are likely to occur as well. Um, intelligence will change over time, and the decision making uh, based on that intelligence is also then likely to change over time. So with that, things like uh, software and, and firmware improvements would be relatively inexpensive to achieve in, in an architecture uh, like, like this. <clears throat> it should also be noted that our at the platform level, RF compatibility concerns are, are also uh, uh, quite critical uh, to, to meet an EW system need, and if not properly uh, identified or managed can really lead to uh, erroneous data. Shown here in gray uh, is the connection to uh, uh, essentially a, a multi-gigabit uh, wide uh, 
uh, network to ensure uh, communication between other other sensors uh, on on board or or off board for that matter if network sensors are are required to ensure uh, RF compatibility needs are met real time. Under this EW architecture, uh, we now essentially try to balance our our throughput requirements uh, at the at the various interfaces, both uh, internal and external and utilize our, our open standards and, and modular approach to achieve a, a flexible and procurable uh, system and product here leveraging things like PCI Gen 4 and uh, multi gigabit uh, Ethernet uh, data ports. You know, also uh, paying attention to what it would take to uh, uh, integrate uh, so our schedule time, uh, the, the various maturities of the technology that we're incorporating as well as well as paying attention to reducing uh, size, weight, power, and cooling requirements. Shown here is a potential procurement and corresponding interface outline. Here I highlight the individual plug-in cards and components, as well as potential LRU outline for the system integrators and system designers. In the case of this uh, electronic warfare architecture, <laughs> using our MOSA SOSA approach really allows us to, to unlock machine learning at the tactical edge to improve uh, detection, uh, characterization, and identification of, of our signals and improve our overall countermeasures effectiveness. Vendors like Abaco are well equipped to provide the plug-in card and corresponding LRU supporting MOSA over the entire life cycle. Moving on to a, a general ISR architecture, in this case with both a platform and network based information sharing requirements. On the receiver front end, expect our ISR effectiveness requirements to really drive the location uh, and importance of where our antenna and our front end electronics are placed. Down at the digital level where um, our decision making really begins, Things like channel count and bandwidths are, are very important. <clears throat> In addition, this is most likely where the beginning of our, our direction finding uh, geolocation or a specific emitter ID processing may, may also start here as well. At the higher level processing stage, again, we see similar requirements that we saw in our previous example. Uh, here, essentially, in intelligence based processing is likely to change over time as well. And it is likely that uh, software and firmware improvements would be relatively inexpensive to absorb over time. For the sake of this general example, a communication link is typically required to send information and or data to other interested parties. The, the communication link is, is likely to have some additional uh, security and anti-tamper requirements involved with it as well. It's expected that over time this communication link itself um, would be required to uh, operate in potentially contested environments. So shown here, this flexible software defined radio type link uh, would allow you the longevity to work in those uh, contested environments going forward. Under this ISR architecture, we again strike a balance with throughput requirements of, of the various plug and card interfaces and use our open standards and modular approach to design something with optimal best in class effectiveness. Shown here is as a potential procurement and corresponding interface outline as before highlighting the individual plug in cards and components <clears throat> where a potential LRU uh, is available for procurement for the system integrators among us. In the case of ISR, MOSA allows us to find common hardware blocks and gives us the ability to adapt to different architectures and requirements over time, providing machine learning in the loop at the tactical edge for operators is really a, a game changing advantage for any any best in class next gen ISR type system. Being able to pre process raw data if need be and provide that back to the larger battle space network. Let us move to our final example. 
a generic radar architecture. On the radar front end, reaching a required a minimum detectable signal and ensuring dynamic range are more difficult due to the inherent proximity and constant struggle to achieve isolation. For the transmitter, a typical radar application may be orders of magnitude more power when compared to our, our prior examples. Uh, in, in addition, the complexity of the antenna and its control is likely also more sophisticated. Uh, the, the additional requirements to control a scan pattern or, or point to beam may overpower your, your traditional IO processing needs for an EW or, or ISR application. Moving on to the converter stage, ba balancing the multiple RF inputs and outputs um, can uh, introduce its own complexity. Uh, in addition, the this is likely where you're, you'll start to observe some additional AT and security type requirements. As mentioned before, uh, timing and control for alignment of the beam or scan pattern may also be required at this stage. The flexibility of our RF system on a chip technology provides access to both high and low level programming languages to really allow our customers to tailor a solution to fit their radar needs. Radar processing may also differ. However, many of the core building blocks are shared, and, and in some cases of radars, potentially many more. So this architecture, although it references you know, single instances of, of SBCs and, and GPUs, uh, it could be imagined that um, there could be an array of SBCs and GPUs behind each one of these. There are many advantages to, to utilizing high-level software languages at this stage, including taking advantage of uh, machine learning and other important graphics libraries. Under this proposed radar architecture, we now balance our, our throughput requirements and return back to our open standards, you know, PCI Gen 4 and our, our multi-gigabit Ethernet protocols. And what you see here is a potential procurement and corresponding interface outline for this for this hypothetical radar system. Here I've highlighted the individual plug-in cards and components as well as potential LRU outlines. Taking this example one step further, uh, our modular open systems approach uh, to, to this radar case uh, can really unlock further uh, multi-role and, and multi-mission capabilities. As the interface standards are, are designed in up front uh, using these uh, open approaches and, and definitions, it would be now in the realm of economically feasible to upgrade this digital front end of this radar, the traditional role of, um, you know, whether it be navigation, situational awareness, or, or fire control are, are still preserved, but with uh, firmware updates and, and potentially some software updates this system could be transformed into a high gain electronic attack asset, unlocking the same or updated arbitrary waveform capabilities used to generate your traditional radar waveforms can be combined to support standoff or stand in jamming roles. This could be as simple uh, as mentioned as uh, a, a software or firmware update uh, cycle over a single plugin card. Uh, a module update to an existing LR, LRU. In the case of radar, MOSA allows us to realize an architecture that will support future advancements, uh, reduce and, and remove uh, much of the risk to things like obsolescence, and enable machine learning improvements to the radar and display processing over time, potentially blurring the lines between our traditional roles and extending the capabilities of existing systems. In review of these three use cases, it is clear where common areas of interest through these applications, as well as where the architecture is modular in nature. Areas that are common benefit from this standardization and harmonization across the vendors and suppliers. Groups like SOSA help drive this to an actionable level to manage the complexity of the technologies that exist uh, for any given hardware and software implementation. Thanks for the explanation, Luis. Um, so how can I, as a customer, get started in a SOSA system design? Thanks, Rich. Yeah, at Abaco, we have invested heavily in ensuring our customers have 
the best in class offerings. Uh, in particular, our, our 3U and 6U SOSA aligned products are available today to meet your EW, ISR, and radar system needs today and, and into the future. So looking ahead into the future, what does Abaco do to support programs as they mature over time? We at Abaco Systems believe strongly in our focus of providing a, a best in class technology to our system and, and board customers. As part of that mission and focus, we ensure that we can support our products and our, our customers over the entire life cycle of a system and platform. Our PLM services provide our customers with everything from upfront configuration control, where the customers can be part of the technology insertion process you know, to, to the other end to repair services and, and long term support to avoid risk to our globally con connected supply chains. In summary, by balancing our, our MOSA and SOSA requirements for procurement, we can work with our customers to service old and new programs and platforms. The MOSA based design and procurement assures an evolution from our, our current state of time-consuming integrations, numerous sole source items, costly obsolescence and, and incompatibility between vendors to this new future state of accelerated changes in access to new and updated technologies, improved uh, life cycle and supportability, interoperability between vendors, sensors and platforms, and overall lower cost of ownership for the platform and system. Luis, thanks a lot for your time um, talking with us today. It was really informative. And to our listeners, thank you very much for your time and attention. Um, don't hesitate to contact Abaco for any of your system needs. And we look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great day.